I mean, you're in Vegas and that's what you're supposed to do. You don't go to Paris and not see the Eiffel Tower. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again and welcome back to my channel. Guys, my boyfriend is impossible to shop for. I never know what to get this man for any sort of special occasion, including his birthday. And so for his last birthday, I decided to just give up on trying to buy him something and instead surprise him with a trip to Las Vegas. As many of you guys know, Misha is from Germany, and so I thought it would be really cool to take him to Vegas so he could see what it's all about. He's seen it depicted in so many different movies and TV shows, and so we bore we boarded a flight and we spent four days in America's Sin City. to Vegas before but it was always for really quick short trips and so I was basically discovering Vegas for the first time alongside Misha and we couldn't help but notice something. Vegas seemed to be dying. Among the hotels and resorts were completely abandoned construction sites. Some of the buildings even on the strip were in complete disrepair and even though there was a flocking of people in Las Vegas that weekend that we were there for a rock and roll marathon, it felt really empty. Vegas always seemed to be the pinnacle of a fun weekend getaway and its reputation is iconic and movies and TV shows just further confirm this impression that Vegas is this amazing city where you go to have this once-in-a-lifetime experience. And so Misha and I started to wonder what happened here? And so every chance we got, Misha and I were talking to locals, we were talking to employees, and of course we consulted the interweb to get some answers. And as it turns out, Vegas really is dying. It seems the heyday of 90s Vegas has worn off, and the 2008 recession has left Vegas with a hangover that it just can't seem to shake. The main appeal of Vegas in its not-so-humble beginnings was that it offered the opportunity to legally gamble. Gambling was largely illegal in the US with the major exceptions of Las Vegas and Atlantic City but Atlantic City is in Jersey and who wants to go to Jersey and so Las Vegas offered an experience that just couldn't be replicated in any of the other 49 states. Now flash forward to the 90s and more and more states started to recognize the serious tax revenue they could accrue through casino operations. And now there are 22 different states that allow commercial casinos. And just like that, the primary allure of Las Vegas disappeared. In fact, you could say it took the sin right out of Sin City. I write my own jokes. Las Vegas did try to adapt to the idea that it was no longer the only show in town anymore by finding other ways to entice tourists. Casino and resort owners started to hit the food scene hard, attracting famous celebrity chefs like Guy Fieri and Gordon Ramsay and Wolfgang Puck to open up restaurants loudly bearing their name. Soon enough, Vegas had collected a fair number of upscale restaurants or other high quality dining options. While it's always impressive for me to see businesses overhaul its legacy product or service in order to maintain relevancy. In this case, Las Vegas business owners fell short. First of all, the cost to dine at these restaurants is astronomically high. A nice dinner with a couple glasses of wine will easily run you $150, and that's on the low end. That automatically slims the population of potential customers, and not just by sheer income level, but also for those who can feasibly afford a meal like that, they probably don't want to spend that much money on a meal after paying for a flight and for a hotel and any other extraneous expenses that come with taking a week or weekend trip to Las Vegas. Vegas used to offer primarily cheap food and really cheap alcohol so that people would dump more and more money on the roulette table or into the slot machines. And so this adaptation sought to change the entire nature of Vegas. And of course there are places to eat beyond these high-end restaurants, but the majority of these options include 
hate chain restaurants. Now I don't want to get into how much I hate chain restaurants because it's not what this video is about, but I am not going to pay $300 for a flight to Vegas, $200 for a hotel every single night that I'm there just to eat at a crappy TGI Fridays that I could have gone to my local strip mall and ate at if I really wanted to. Honestly, my hometown located in rural Pennsylvania with a population of 9,000 offers more attractive dining options than Las Vegas, and I feel like that says a lot. And beyond the price, the accessibility of these restaurants is annoying to say the least. They're located deep within the casinos so that you have to walk by tons of slot machines and different tables just to get to them. At times it felt like we were Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz trying to find our way to Emerald City, except there was no yellow brick road showing us the way and nobody tragically died in the making of our vacation. So maybe it wasn't like Wizard of Oz at all, but I think I painted a picture for you guys. But don't worry guys, don't worry, because there was a noticeable smattering of Starbucks everywhere along the strip in every single casino. So even if you're in Las Vegas, you were still able to go and get your iced, triple, venti, macchiato, mocha, pumpkin spice latte if you needed it. A tactic employed by Las Vegas casino owners to try to squeeze as much money as they could out of fewer customers was to decrease winning rates. And sure, on the surface, it sounds reasonable. If you want to increase your profit margin, then decrease the output of winnings. Except they didn't consider the Z factor in this equation. The Z factor being the experience of its customers. Sure, their tactic might prove successful for the tourists that go to Las Vegas and decide to gamble for the first times in their life because, I mean, they're in Vegas and that's what you're supposed to do. You don't go to Paris and not see the Eiffel Tower. But for people who know anything about gambling, this tactic is completely bombing. People are not willing to spend money to go to Vegas for lower winning rates than what they can just get at their local casino. Why would you do that? And furthermore, if casinos are giving out less money through winnings, then there's less money overall circulating on the strip. And so people aren't going to spend as much money on other businesses in Las Vegas, like say at a fancy Michelin restaurant or a TGI Fridays. And another tactic Las Vegas casinos and resorts and hotels are using is increased hidden fees. And this was something that was personally very frustrating for me as a traveler as I was looking to book a hotel in Las Vegas because every price I saw on the hotel's website or booking.com or Priceline or whatever did not include the resort fee and taxes, which are exorbitant. So I would see a room at a fairly acceptable price and then I would start to go through the online booking process and then see the total amount due for the room explode at the end due to these taxes and fees. I don't really like to talk about my personal expenses on YouTube, but I'm going to for this video just so you guys can understand what my experience was like. After spending legitimately hours and hours looking at hotels online, I finally booked a simple, modest queen room for Misha and I at the link, which is in a fairly good location on the Strip. I paid $525 for three nights, which is $175 a night, and then I paid an additional $68 in taxes and $105 in resort fees, totaling $698 for three nights in Vegas, or in other terms, $232 a night. That is a fairly good chunk of money to spend on a weekend getaway just for a hotel and like I said for a very simple and plain room and honestly it would have deterred me from going to Las Vegas completely if it wasn't for my desire to give Misha this experience. Now we did learn that Las Vegas is still a very popular location for weddings. I think we've all seen a movie or a TV show where a couple decides last minute to go to Las Vegas to elope in some random chapel, sometimes a very cheesy chapel with an Elvis guy walking around. But those aren't the only types of weddings that happen there. There are very formally planned weddings that happen in Vegas as well. And then it's a very popular location for some businesses to hold conventions because there are massive convention centers in Las Vegas. There are also a lot of different shows that you can see in Las Vegas like Blue Man Group or Cirque du Soleil. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I think you guys know what I'm probably talking about. The people with the acrobatic, you know, with the little scarves that hang from the ceiling. I'm really failing at explaining this, but you guys know what I'm talking about. No 
nobody doesn't know Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. My French friend is gonna be very upset when he watches this video with me. And while Celine Dion is finally hanging up her hat after capitalizing on the Titanic theme song for the past eight years, Las Vegas was lucky to rein in Lady Gaga for a two-year contract. But guys, the cool shows are limited and weddings and conventions are not enough to keep Las Vegas alive. The template for tourism is shifting and Vegas doesn't exactly fit the trend. Tourists are heavily leaning toward more activity-based vacations, whether it be a cruise with available excursions, ski vacations, ecotourism, or trips centered around adventure sports like rock climbing or scuba diving. Vegas pretty much just offers Vegas. It's located in legitimately the middle of nowhere, where the closest chance of doing any sort of activity is hiking in the Grand Canyon, which is no less than a two hour drive to get to the North Rim. Despite only being in Vegas for just over three days, we dedicated an entire day to driving to and seeing the Grand Canyon because there just wasn't enough to do to entertain us in Vegas. There are bus tours that offer transportation to and from the Grand Canyon, but what Misha and I ended up doing was renting a slingshot to drive there and back ourselves and stopping at the Hoover Dam on the way back. But beyond that, options are bleak. Misha didn't believe me that Vegas was surrounded by nothing until we got into that slingshot and drove about 20 minutes outside the city, and then it really hit him. Tourists, specifically millennials, are also wanting either a unique experience or a local experience, and Vegas doesn't offer either of these. Sure, your night of inebriation might fall into the realm of epic, but it is in no way unique, and Instagram can only absorb so many photos of girls wearing very skimpy outfits with the caption, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And while there are of course locals living in Vegas, that's not exactly what Vegas is for. And lastly, tourists are more and more wanting to go to new destinations. I often tease my parents for their choice to travel to Munich, Germany over and over again, year after year after year after year. My parents just keep going to the same exact city. I don't get it. I'm I'm like most millennials, where I want to go and see as much of the world as I possibly can. The only way that I want to go back to the same exact location over and over again is if there's family, is if there's some sort of adventure sport associated with it, like snowboarding, or if it's a city like New York City, where it would be impossible to be able to explore all of it within one trip. There's always going to be something new going on in New York City or new borough that you can go and explore. But Las Vegas is not not a place I see myself going to over and over again, unless it's for a very special occasion like a friend's wedding or a convention or something like this. Movies and social media perpetuate this image of Las Vegas as being this crazy, fun, energetic, party city. And vloggers on YouTube make it look like they are living their best life in Las Vegas. And because of this, Misha had really, really, really high expectations of Las Vegas. But the reality was bleak. I don't think, no matter how you slice it, that Las Vegas is worth it. Honestly, I would rather spend my money going somewhere else to have a much more fulfilling experience. If you disagree with me, let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And guys, my patrons, thank you so much for all of the support you've given me. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Kelly Does Her Thing so that you can follow me through my stories. I hope to see y'all there.